Welcome to the brand new map Harat River for the BFME 1 on the Phase 2.2 Online Battle Arena. Between very good players in a 101 Condor versus Isengard. Harat River is a 1v1 map, which is the newest creation of the 1v1 map pool, which you can also play in the Online Battle Arena by downloading the Phase 2.2 launcher in the description down below. We have currently over 250 people in total after the reset. Before that, we had like 400 people, so it's quite active. I would highly encourage you to give it a shot. You can play 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v4s, all your heart desires, okay? So here on the Alvin Wood, the soldiers will have more leadership. And also the opening was Uruk Pit Furnace and Farm and Barracks. Farm and Barracks has the problem that your blacksmith is going to be a bit delayed. So it will need a bit longer time to reach level 2, but I think it's not a big deal. It's going to be like 20 seconds or so, not a deal-breaking kind of thing, okay? So with the Hobbit on the field, it's going to be hard for Isengard to commit to this fight. And you need to be always careful. He has many, many workers repairing the structure non-stop. As you can see, the health is going down and up. And I believe it's going to be difficult for him to destroy this with only a few soldiers remaining on the field. And also the Hobbit should be placed around the soldiers, so it has a bit more protection. Otherwise, the Uruks will bring the Hobbits to Isengard. I mean, obviously, as long as you can destroy the Lumber Mill or kill some of the workers, Isengard's eco is going to be pretty much untouched. The only good thing here for Gondor is that Isengard is kind of checked and he can't really leave this land until, until now. And it will kind of buy you time to destroy, uh, to keep your own farms alive and protected. So one more soldier. He is now in two in total. One more is coming from this location. Hobbit might go down if Uruks... Ah, beautiful hit by the Uruks. They are very badly damaged, but we are getting more and more Uruks. They are getting produced very quickly. 23 seconds at level 1, 20 seconds at level 2, and 16 seconds at level 3. Okay, so here we have a fight. Again, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, Uruks will never lose against any Swordman. And soldiers being the second strongest, but second strongest also means the first loser. <laughs> Level 2 unlocked, but they have been taking a lot of damage, and for that reason, the Uruks will be able to finish off the rest. So the Triple Furnace around this location, he's towering up for the worst case scenario. Better safe than sorry, that's the concept right there. Hobbit is going to be revived to throw some rocks on the Uruks, and getting level 2, which will, level 3 actually, which will increase his damage big time. So now with the Uruks and Soldiers, it's very important to use the block formation. That's kind of their main strength. That's also the main differential between Uruk Soldiers against Orcs or Peasants, because Orcs and Peasants, they don't have this. They can't use this, which kind of makes make sense, because then you can't win against Soldier or Uruk in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Alright, so he was trying to creep this with the War Chant, but Alvin Wood has been pleased. So on the land, you have no leadership. But you can obviously go to this location and creep this one with the pikemen with watch and it's all enough, uh, all enough. The berserker against the hobbit and expose Uruks. Now go with the pikemen. Oh, beautiful micro by the gunner player <laughs> saying thank you very much for the huge donation. I needed that one, okay? I mean, obviously getting power points from this. He already has one power point in the pocket after starting with the Alvin Wood. And he will use the second Alvin Wood right here. That's what. It's very important, you want to use it on cooldown to get an advantage of the power point which your opponent can't really counter at the beginning of the game. Warchan is going to be used on the pikeman, and with the Warchan they can easily creep this, no problemo. But you can't creep this one. Here is the thing, you can kill the Vorks, yes, but you have not many units remaining on the field to finish off the lair. That means before you can finish off the lair, the lair will produce more Vorks, so you will be screwed. <laughs> Don't do this. You need some sort of other units like Berserker or something that is able to deal more damage to the structure. Gondor is creeping this area, uh, this area and he's gonna also creep this area eventually. Yeah, he's gonna take this. The creeping a layer will get you from level 1 flat to level 2, but in this case it will get even almost level 3 because they are very close to level 2 anyway. Harad River is again a new 1v1 map with a couple of uh, creeps. We have works here and here. And here and here. So we have actually in total one, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four times two. 
in new, with the new maps, we are always aiming to make it very symmetrical. So, unlike the official creation of EA games, when they made this game, none of the maps were actually equal or symmetrical, which kind of, you know, <laughs> gave always a player a huge advantage. Like, for example, think about any map, really. You know, think about Forts of Eisen, even. The left side has an advantage over the right side because the settlements being closer to each other, which makes it easier to be protected. You know? But the new maps may be Firindale, Forts of Brunei 2, Mering Stream, Higurashi Forest, or also now this one, Harat River, are all symmetrical. It means, regardless on which side you are, the opponent has no advantage nor a disadvantage against you. Beautiful micro with the pie, with the Berserker here. Eisengard taking over the map, very good. You want to deny creeping from your opponent, that's very important. Great company has been special summoned to deal with the pikemen. He's splitting them up a little bit, chasing down the pikemen ar around here. And this has to move ar around this location. Level 2 Lumber Mill. In level 2 Lumber Mill, Eisengard will get lots of resources from these two Lumber Mills, making him quite rich. And he has obviously two power points. He needs to go for the, for the Tainted Land, but he went for the Palantir. He's gonna use it on the Vorks to chase down the level 3 knight. But against a good player, it's hard to kill him. Because he can run in circles like he does, which will make you stop a little bit before he can finish off the kill. And he will make it to the well, instantly respawn his unit, and you will not be able to finish him off. In the meantime, we have a fight here between Vorks and knights and rangers. The pikeman is exposed, will get heavily shot in the face by the Grey Company. And also these works are getting bullied by these two battalions of Great Company. So beautiful. Not bad. Not bad at all. We have Lords up on the field. Lords creeping the solo, which will bring him to level 3. But again, arrow damage against structures, as you can see and tell, is not the greatest. So you want to use it with the sword. Put him to work. Okay. Uh, armory in the front. Something you don't like to see. There is one pikeman <laughs> next to the Orphank. The main heart of the beast of the you castle of Isengard. Industry has been used. You laborers, get to work. New lumberers, get to work. Okay, he will create this next game. It's like fault it's like ASMR. Lures at creeping. One hour later. Full base, he's gonna make this tower guard soldier combination, which is enabled in the patch 2.2. I mean the entire premise or the idea of 2.2 was to kind of make every unit useful and to kind of force the player to recruit every unit the faction has to offer, okay? That's the entire premise. And I'm happy that we see that also in practice. Okay, creep secured. Isengard will take it. Almost level 4 lords. It's pretty good. This creep is going to be taken also by Gondor. There is also a pathway from this location, by the way. When you take this outpost over here, your opponent can attack you from this location, from this location, or this location, making it kind of um, easier to take down the outpost, you know? I mean, obviously, we have three giant pathways. One, two, and three. And in this pathways, so you have this pathway. You can have, like, a giant area like this. You can move from this location. You can move from this location. But this location all alone is already big and giant. So, free moving, no blocking, Harad design, obviously, on this map. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it, you know? Because making those maps, especially for people like us, we have no experience in this. So, you might say it's not the most beautifully designed, because we just don't have the experience to do that. But trying still to put in time and effort to make it enjoyable. But in the designed this map, we made the placement of the settlements together. And then he made the design of the map, you know? And it took him a long time for somebody who doesn't know how to do it. Even easy challenges might be quite difficult. Alright, so on the land, the... I mean, even on the land, the uruk pikeman combo is just stronger. It's like the neutral counter to the swordman uh, soldier combo. The reason being is because the knights can do what they just did, you know? You can trample into this... While you can't really trample into the Tower Guard Soldier combination. So everything is their weakness. Level 5. Pikemen are getting heavily hit when you don't put them in formation. You will get bullied hardcore. But with Forge Blades and in Porcupine formation, you can easily deal with this Knights of Condor, no problemo. Map control is still looking good for Isengard, but it's getting to look better and better for Gondor. It's gonna summon the Great Company now for the second time. Isengard is kinda 
um, playing it a bit slow, even though he had like an amazing start into this game. Again, like I explained in my previous video, outpost control is key to victory because this outpost will give you lots of vision. It will block this pathway kind of a little bit, but it also will give you vision around this entire location. And you can easily protect this against Gondor. You can put some crossbowmen in the tower, in the citadel, in, into the tower, and then you just put like a pikeman there, which will make it quite difficult for Gondor to commit to this. And if he commits to that, he needs like a huge army and lots of resources to do that. Great company is still up on the field. Now the focus will be on the structures. Lords hitting level 4, that's good. One more level needed for the level 5. Lords with the carnage is a hero. You don't want to underestimate. But now the Vorgs have their armor and their bleeds, so they will become the, you know, killers of the Great Company, no problemo. Four power points in total, 3.7k in the bank for Gondor. He's obviously saving up for Gandalf, who got like a, a damage, uh, I mean, price increasement in the patch 2.2 in the latest version it is. Seemed like, obviously, Saruman got already, because the money is kicking in faster. And he was coming at a bit. He, he was coming out a bit too fast. Now the five percent increase on the price will not make a huge difference because by the time you have six thousand, it's not going to be a big deal. But you know, again, every second matters in this game. Beautiful trample. You can see you can trample them from behind too. Just keep trampling. You don't want to melee fight the pikemen here because they have um, obviously increased increased damage against horses. But if you trample them, they don't deal the porcupine damage like they would do when you put them in the formation. So combining units has advantages, but obviously like everything in the world, also disadvantages. Most important of them is obviously to lose the porcupine formation armor and the revenge damage to the horses. Lourdes is going to use the cripple. Beautiful hit, very close to level 5, but very soon we will have a wizard on the field. Now he has 4 power points in the bank, but 2 of these power points have to be invested into the Gan of the White. Gan of the Grey is really not a strong hero, you know, it's a waste of money a little bit. It's the same thing like Anduril with uh, Aragorn without Anduril, even though Aragorn is uh, still a bit more useful than Gandalf. Gandalf just doesn't deal damage at all with the Grey, he can't really he can't use the Easter Light at all, uh, so he's weak, he's weak. He's squishier and his powers also recharge so slowly. Like there are tri there is triple buff you get from the white. You unlock your history, your wizards, your abilities deal way more damage and recharge faster. And sorry, I forgot about it. You also uh, get more health by unlocking the white. But he's hiding his white. It's kind of degree. As you can see, the easter light is grayed out. Now he's white. It also gives you 300 health, which is a lot. Like he has 1,900 health, so he usually would have 1,600. So it's like 30%, 25% more health. So it's the best power point investment ever, ever you know? Easterly will only hit one pikeman, but you can use it. It's not a skill shot. It will always deal amazing damage to everything, to every unit, even structures and heroes. So it is the most powerful ability in the game single target it is I mean obviously level 3 barracks incoming powerpoint wise he has 3 powerpoints very close to eagles kind of and Isengard finally marching forward now he has 2 pikemen, uh, two crossbowmen uru combo 2 pikemen and lurts who is still missing a bit of experience for the level 5 and now he needs to move you know you don't want to be waiting for your opponent to attack because you will lose the entire map if you do this you want to be putting pressure on the castle of Gondor which is easier said than done, but here you but that's what you need to do because defending won't win you the game. You need to leave few pikemen, like three, four battalions of pikemen around the base to protect yourself, and your army has to be on the march, has to be the one who is putting pressure on your opponent. Kind of force them to make a defensive choice. Force them to fight your army. Because right now you need to always understand the current situation of the game. Um, there is no need for Gondor to ever fight this army at all. There is no need. Why would he fight an army that is close to the own castle? He can avoid the army, get the whole map like he does, make you starve. And again, by the way, you need... Um, see it. You need uh, the field of fires here. I hope he won't go for the, for the field, uh, for the rain. There is no need to go for the rain. 
Now it's now you might say, but he's an outpost there. He needs to go for the ring. No, he doesn't need to go for the ring. No, he doesn't need to go for the ring. Lourdes is getting level 5. He has 60% damage from this. Warchan gives you 50-50 and he will F Saruman very soon. So he has more leadership than the stage you can offer. He will win. His combos are stronger. The Uruks are tankier compared to the soldiers in the front. The pikemen here, they don't really add too much to the table because they are not as strong either. Because they can't re really use their um, porcupine formation. Even though this, pike, this combo is way stronger than pikemen and crossbowmen combo from Isengard. Because tower guards are not as squishy against archers or fire arrows as the pikemen are from Isen. Beautiful dodge here. Many, many pikemen. Hard to focus on everything because he's attacking you from every single location. You want to put the porcupine formation here. Again, he's rotating with the army back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But in reality, what he needs to do, okay, he's like, okay, you want to take this fight? I'm going to go to your outpost. That's what he needs to do because whenever you move up like this, what will happen is he will dis disengage. And then you lose time and momentum doing this kind of moves. And Gondor has the whole map, by the way. Like his outpost and literally every farm beside this farm. And this farm in the front. It's going to be land, beautiful, trample with the Knights of Gondor. He covered the land and that's the reason why you should never vent for the freezing rain when you go land. You know, he has, even when you use, let's assume you use the freezing rain and you negate his leadership. But you have two places he can use and utilize to get his leadership back. So don't do this, you know. Alright, giant eagles are readable again. Eagle's main purpose and main goal is to kill Lourdes. When Lourdes is dead, Gondor can do whatever he wants. The main threat here, obviously, being this dude, this handsome, white, old man. We improved the smithy. Um, I mean, he's just not really actively doing so much, watching too much around his own base and giving the map entirely to Gondor's hands and waiting for Gondor to engage. Um, again, the understanding of the game always has to be to ask yourself why he would ever fight this army. Why would he need to fight this when you don't force him to a fight? When you just stay here, you will never force him into fighting you. He can just be annoying. He can go where your loot isn't, get power points, fish power points with Gandalf. And in long terms, he will have more power points than you do and EOD will win the, win the game. So now, Eisen's goal should be to force Gondor into fighting this army. This The only way to do this is going to the outpost and then taking it because Gondor will not be able to destroy this, uh, defend this outpost and sieging the base here. That's the only possible way to do this, okay? I just fight this. There is no need to not fight. I will represent the men of Gondor. We hear Boromir coming. Boromir is level obviously 3. Beautiful fireball, but there is Lourdes, uh, there is Gandalf coming. Eagle is going to be used. Now, fireball is on cooldown, unfortunately. You kill the eagles. Eagle 1 is going to be going, going down. Beautiful move here with the um, Carnage. He gets more tanky, but now he's exposed, obviously. He has no cripple, then he's using the Carnage. Now he's splitting up the army a little bit, but a beautiful blast is going to happen anyway. Um, and beautiful but faramir the wizard slayer will be able to finish off sariman and boromir also got level four now maybe now it makes sense to go for the re freezing rain you know because now all of a sudden gondor has triple leadership what a massacre right there what a massacre now the thing here is i believe it's important to have like a feeling about how many power points your opponent has and to judge mentally if you think he is close to the eagles when you think there is a percentage chance that he might be close to eagles, I believe you need to hold your fireball to kill one of the eagles pretty much instantly. Fireball will hurt them, they will have like 1 HP left. So all you need is like one shot from Lourdes and fireball and one eagle is gone instantly. Then you cut, on, cut the damage half by two, uh, by two and the one eagle need to hit Lourdes like three times or something which gives your army enough time to kill him. Um, power point wise, a huge advantage in the power points department. Now we are talking 3 power points for the EOD versus 11 power points for our Badrock. That's the huge difference. Beautiful blast with the Gandalf again. 
Um, Isengard has money, true, but now it's very hard for him to fight. Boromir is diving in. He's a tanky boy. One does not simply walk into Isengard. Boromir, gonna be his survivor. That's not the movie, by the way. In the game, he knows how to live. He knows how to live. Gandalf is saying, come at me, bro, using the lightning sword. Go back to the shadows. Say hello to your servant, uh, to your master. Blast is available, but nobody's trying to kill Gandalf. Uh, the Pikemen are coming in the porcupine formation. Gandalf is just gonna run away from them, no problem. This little army is not en enough to finish off the wizard. Uh, there is only the bees. There comes the EOD, while Isengard still needs 9 power points. What a flawless gameplay by Gondor. And the few mistakes Isengard did, despite having a very phenomenal start into the game, you can see um, that you need to play aggressively at every stage of the game. game. Camping is not going to win you the game because you will lose eventually more in long term than you will gain. And Gondor is a faction that you don't want him to be cash floating like this. Gondor has so much money now and Isengard shouldn't allow Gondor to have this much dominance on the map, you know? It's easy said than done, playing and uh, talking is different, I know, uh, but that's how you need to play this matchup. Because your army is stronger than your opponent's army and if you don't force him to a fight, he will dodge the fight and farm power points. And you can see the result, EOD versus 14 power points. GG, well played. Gondor and Gandalf on foot, boys. Okay, see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.